In the first of these presentations on evolution, we saw the principle of internalization. We can now understand it better. It is not that the outer world was taken in, but that whenever something was cast out of the original world plant animal man, a part of it remained within. Hence the species that appeared later are more autonomous because they have more world in them. Conversely, the lower the organism, the more it exists and behaves as a member of a whole. Symbiosis, they call it. These pictures show a sampling of the symbiosis that builds up the soil. Some of its denizens digesting plant litter, others digesting the products of this digestion, and so on. Lichens are known as composite organisms because they are composed of algae and fungi. But even the term composite conceals a presupposition, namely that the alga and the fungus were originally separate and one day somehow coalesced. The giant moray is nine feet long and eats mainly fish, but it lets the wrasse clean it. That benefits both moray and wrasse. How did this partnership come about? Are we really to suppose that one day a school of desperately hungry wrasses ventured to, to scavenge inside the mouths of their nine-foot predators? Some of whom, by foregoing the prey for whatever reason, subsequently prospered? Such an additive hypothesis cannot explain symbiosis. All of earthly life is a unity, and the beings are interdependent. Evolution, like the formation of any organism, proceeds from the whole to the part. The creation myths of various peoples tell of the origin of beings by the principle of separation. An apparent exception is the faculty of thinking. Thoughts were once received from without. Witness Aristotle. The thoughts are in the perceived forms, as are the abstract predicates and the various states and affections of the things perceived and therefore someone who perceived nothing would nothing learn or understand. That is, for the ancients, thoughts were still given along with the sense perceptions. Similar assertions can be found from Cicero to Thomas Aquinas. Ultimately, John Locke proposed that a child's mind is a blank slate waiting to receive. At this point, Leibniz objected with an update on our new relation to thinking. Nothing is in the intellect that was not in the sense. Make an exception. Nothing but the intellect itself. Well, the soul contains being, substance, the one, the same, cause, perception, reasoning, and many other concepts that the senses cannot provide. 
thoughts now complement the sense perceptions from within, as discussed in the presentation about epistemology. That is, a cognitive spark has separated from the unity of the world spirit and been entrusted to us individually in the course of the centuries. Thanks to the cosmic thinking of the gods, the world is imbued with meaning. Now the responsibility for this source of becoming is shifting to us. Thus natural evolution by itself is incomplete. It continues in the evolution of consciousness. As explained in the presentation on the kingdoms of nature, the fourfold being of man as physical, etheric, and astral body and I shows that earth evolution is the fourth of the world's great developmental stages. A simple law states that at every stage some beings advance and some do not. This is related to the principle of separation. It means the original unity becomes increasingly differentiated. More specifically, it means the kingdoms of nature can be understood in eight groups. In this diagram, blue symbolizes the physical body, green the life body, red the sentient body, and yellow the eye. These terms were introduced in the presentation on the members of man's being. Among the animals, the vertebrates and probably all deuterostomes have preserved an image of the ancient moon evolution in the present. The lower animals have a younger, less internalized sentience. The higher plants reveal something of the ancient sun evolution. They have life bodies of sun ether, the lower plants, moon ether. This way of understanding explains, for instance, the symbiosis of insect and blossom. Both share a common origin. A striking illustration is the fig tree. Because it blossoms inward, it can be pollinated only by the fig wasp, which lives and breathes inside the fig. The two cannot exist without each other. For every species of fig, there is a species of wasp. A mantram given by Rudolf Steiner for a truly modern consciousness of natural science puts the relationship like this. Behold the plant. It is the butterfly fettered by the earth. Behold the butterfly. It is the plant freed by the cosmos. Thus today's world of living organisms presents an indirect image of evolution. We can now revisit Rudolf Steiner's summary, quoted in the first installment. Into all of this, there played a thought inclination of mine toward the then flourishing theory of evolution. It had in Heckel taken on forms in which the self-sustained existence and working of the spiritual could find no consideration. The later, the perfect, was supposed to have issued from the earlier, the unevolved, in the course of time. That made sense to me 
with regard to the outer sensory actuality. Yet I knew the self-sustaining spirituality, braced in itself, independent of the sensory, too well to say that the outer sensory world of appearance is right. But the bridge needed to be built from this world to that of the spirit. In the course of time thought in a sensory way, the human spiritual seems to evolve out of the preceding unspiritual. The evolution of the world is then to be understood like this, that the preceding unspiritual, out of which later the spirituality of man unfolds itself, has next to it and outside of it a spiritual. The later spiritualized sensoriness in which man appears then steps onto the scene through this, that the spirit ancestor of man unites with the imperfect unspiritual forms and transforming them then stands forth in sensory form. This ancestor from the future is the divine archetype of humanity known as Christ who achieves fully spiritualized sensoriness in the resurrection. The kingdoms of nature have remained behind to make our evolution possible. They live unfree in an enchanted state, awaiting redemption. So, evidently, the story continues. <laughs> 